Hey guys, glad you came back for part two of the AC install on the LS Swap truck. In part one, we showed you the three different AC compressors, why we chose the Dirty Dingo, and the fact that it is a smaller lighter compressor, it should fit in there just fine. That is yet to be determined, we'll find out when we lower the engine in. But for right now, in order to install that particular compressor onto the motor, uh, it required a little additional work. Normally, I don't read ahead on the directions, and I just jump right in. And that's what slowed me down. It turns out that there are three mounting bosses on the base of the block. Let me show you those to you. There are three mounting points on the bottom of the block. Uh, now, these two are the upper mounting points for the compressor bracket. These are going to be on the lower. However, this one won't be used, and this one has not been tapped. So they recommend that you drill and tap that boss with a .339 drill bit. And I have never heard of a .339 or a Type R drill bit, but they do exist. So I went and bought some, and of course you can't buy just one. So this is a Type R cobalt drill bit. And I'm going to drill a hole. It, uh, the directions say to drill the hole three-fourths of an inch deep and tap it with a 10 millimeter by 1.5 tap, one half inch deep. So I've got the tap, I've got the drill bits. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the drill bit so that I don't go deeper than 0.75 inches because I don't wanna create a problem there. And then on the tap, we'll do put a piece of tape on it as well at the half inch mark so we don't go too far. So I'm going to put the uh, bracket that goes on the bottom in place with this bolt, see where the hole lines up on this boss, and we will a hammer and a punch to put a dent right in the center where that hole would be so that I know exactly where to drill. Okay, I'm gonna install this lower bracket. It goes on like this. It fits in the last hole here, and this is where we're going to use our punch to make a divot on this boss to thread into that. So this goes to this hole. I'm going to tap it with a hand, half a handle because this frame is in the way. Put a little grease on the end of the tap so that as it went in it would hold on to the shavings. The lower bracket is now on. One thing I noticed in drilling this hole that you have to hit it exactly in the center because this bracket is made just exactly so. And my hole was slightly off to the, to the left. So I just used a round file to open that hole up so that this, knowing was the correct position, it would allow this to, uh, to line up correctly. It's straight. Uh, I didn't want to go too deep. I followed the directions and tapped it half inch deep and the shortest screw was still a little bit long. So I simply used a couple of extra washers. There's four washers instead of one uh, to support that because I didn't want a chance uh, drilling it any deeper uh, once I'd already tapped it and I didn't want to make a mistake of getting through the block and I didn't know how far I could go. So to be conservative, I just added a couple of extra washers. It's tight and it is in place. Now we can mount the upper bracket. When you're installing the upper bracket for the compressor, you use spacer A, which is the smallest one that comes in the package. And it fits between the boss and the bracket because there is a uh, casting boss here that sticks out that does not allow the bracket to mount flush to the threaded bosses. So you have to put a spacer in there and it's the one that will be labeled A. Side brackets are now installed. You have to tap, this has a little bushing in the top ear and you have to squeeze it in just a little bit to make it fit within the ears. And then there's a, uh, a bolt goes in this uh, tab with a lock nut. This, this little nut threads directly into this uh, part of the compressor. Um, 
At that point, you can also tighten up the lower bolt. There's a long bolt that runs to the bottom here. So there's one long bolt, two short bolts that hold the compressor to the brackets, two upper bolts that have, at least for the truck uh, application, uh, spacers that are labeled A, two more down here in the bottom that hold the bottom bracket, one of which you had to drill and tap. And now we're going to mount the tensioner right there. Go ahead and put the bolts through the tensioner along with the spacers because they're going like this. You try to do them one at a time. You could do the top one first, but not the bottom one first. The direction stated that when the belt is in the correct position, it will ride on the front ribs of the pulley on the AC compressor. The, the ribs or the number of ribs on this uh, pulley, there's two more than necessary and that's to allow for adjustment forward and back of this compressor depending on the application. Okay. All right, and the belt is in place. Fits on there well, seated on the crank pulley, on the tensioner, and the AC compressor. Let me show you what I mean on the Presser where it needs to fit. So now looking at the side view with the compressor compared to where it was, the, bra the motor mount bracket can now fit like this and you can see how much space there is. So there's a huge difference. Okay, to show you where the belt should ride, there should be two exposed ribs, which there are. Depending on the positioning and the application, the compressor would move one forward or back and that would allow it to uh, be positioned either in the middle or in the back. So don't be alarmed if you see more ribs on the pulley than ribs on the belt. Now we're doing a trial fit of the engine into the engine bay to see where the compressor would make contact at. I've had different people tell me different stories. Now we'll know the final truth. Um, as you can see, if I get the, the motor needs to drop down about another two inches and it will clear the front cross member. But where I think we're going to run into some contact is right there at the pulley. So I'm going to mark a couple of places. I'm having to use both hands to do this. I'm going to mark a couple of places on the frame and that's where we're going to have to, to notch it. Okay, so after evaluating closely, I can see this mount needs to come down about another inch and based on the other side it's going to have to come over to the left about an inch. So I want to make sure I take out enough material so that as the whole engine drops down that the ear of this bracket is not a problem. So I'm going to cut it, forget the lines I've drawn, I'm going to cut it about where this bolt is. I'm going to cut it straight back just on the outside of this hole straight over and then angle it this way so that in the future, uh, you know, you can change a belt without any trouble. But I also want to make sure that once the engine is lowered and to the left a little bit, that there isn't any clearance problem with the ear of the compressor. This is the area that was cut out. I used a sanding disc to get the area around it cleaned up. Now I'm going to clean up the metal that came out of it. Try to straighten it out a bit and uh, rebend it and use it to be able to go back into that space. May have to add a little metal to it, but the majority of the original metal can go back into it. Get a quick break. Slicing and dicing time. This is the piece that I cut out. This is part of it, and this was also part of it. Uh, by taking this and flipping it around, I can pretty much put this piece back in right down in here. That's my plan. It's hard to do with one hand, but it will just about fit in there. And then I can cut the other uh, piece I've got. And uh, I believe I can make most of it fit. So I'm putting the same sheet metal back into it. This is the area that was cut out. And I used the same metal that I cut out to reverse and trim and fit back in there. And I think it fit pretty good. I had to do a little trimming. But uh, it all fit in there, got it all welded up, uh, sanded it down a bit, now I'm going to shoot a little uh, paint on it. But I wanted to show you what we had to do and what it looks like. 
So you can see where I notched the frame and it turned out about the way I had hoped it would. There's plenty of room there to get clearance if you have to get in there and do anything. The tightest area actually is in the back and kind of hard to see, but there's about half, maybe three quarters of an inch between the back of the compressor and the frame and the sliding mounts are adjusted all the way uh, to one end so it cannot go back any further. But there is plenty of clearance for that. It should work just fine. Guys, thanks for hanging with me this long. I know it's taken a while to get this uh, engine finally into the truck and with the compressor and that was really the slowdown. Uh, I'm real happy that it works. It didn't really take more work than I expected. I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, I did find out that most all the people I was getting advice from probably have never done this before. So I can tell you without a doubt, if you're using a sliding mount and the, the uh, motor mounts I've been using are from Metal Tech Manufacturing. So specifically with that mount in the position where the engine is as far forward as it can go, that short compressor will fit. You will have to modify the frame a little bit. It's not a big deal. I cut out a piece. I was able to turn it over, cut it in half, splice it, and weld it all back in there. All the metal I used to re-weld that is the metal I cut out of it. I didn't add anything else, just the metal I removed. It took me about 20 minutes to cut the metal out. It took me about an hour and a half of massaging. It fit well, welded it in. Uh, I've got a little burn, a few burn marks. I hate welding laying on my back. Anyway, the compressor's in, it looks good. There's plenty of room. Our next step will probably be to mount the transmission and put it in place. Uh, the PCM has been sent off to be reprogrammed. I'm waiting to get that back any time now. And we'll be working on the harness shortly as well. But all the parts I used uh, for this will be listed in the description below. I'll also add a link for the Dirty Dingo directions on how to install this compressor so you can see for yourself how it goes in without any surprises. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I appreciate a thumbs up. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks a lot.